but we will go ahead. Welcome everyone and welcome to Commsverse. Um, so this session is uh, session 239. It's one team to rule them all. Teams in project management uh, with Martin and I'll hand it over to you Martin. Thank you Martin. Uh, so welcome everyone on Commsverse and on my session one team to rule them all. Uh, before we start, okay, uh, thanks slide for our uh, sponsors. Without them it would be possible to gather all of these great uh, speakers and organizers. A uh, lot of, lot of really huge list of sessions, of great sessions. A uh, few words about me. My name is Marcin Siewnicki. I'm from Warsaw, Poland. Mm, I work as a Microsoft 365 architect consultant in ISCG company. Uh, I'm also one of the SharePoint Saturday Warsaw organizer and I'm social community speaker. I focus on Microsoft 365 tips, SharePoint Online, where I'm uh, I'm a SharePoint guy, in fact. Uh, so that's my cat. Uh, if I can, she <laughs> automatically, you know, uh, sends my camera on and must go and block my computer. But she's sleeping currently. Okay, so quick agenda. Uh, why teams? Why do we need teams in project management? We have all other great tools, so why another one? Then I will talk a little about building blocks in teams. Uh, later about data sources that we can use uh, to build our uh, our team. Uh, I will show you quick, or the simple but powerful power up. Uh, there is a based on that. Then a few words about reporting and reports in project in, inside teams. And at the end, uh, some automations, how to automate our project provisioning, the teams provisioning. Okay, so that's based on a true customer story. Uh, few, a few months ago, I, I had a meeting with one of our customers. Uh, and he had a lot of problems with projects, uh, collaboration tools, meetings, etc. So it was they, they were missing files, uh, meetings, you know, classic mess in, in project management. So we have uh, too many projects, too many tools, uh, teams, documents, etc. And he said that yeah, uh, they 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 use uh, projects, project management. Uh, systems for IT projects, so it's, it's uh, like some kind of development projects, and they have a uh, lot of projects planned because it's it's main main artifact inside uh, the day projects. Of course, a lot of meetings, notes, but after meetings, it's uh, they produce a lot of notes. Uh, of course, code repositories before because they they pr uh, develop projects and, and programs. In fact. A uh, lot of docu documents, documentation is a huge part of the projects, tasks, because uh, they, they must uh, assign tasks to people, to developers, to sales guys, to marketing team, etc. And of course, communication between team, maybe teams, between project management, between uh, stakeholders, and of course, customers as a third party, and in most cases, external, external users. And then, of course, they have a lot of you know, teams because they, they have a lot of projects simultaneously. And each team, you know, use the all of mostly all of the features of all of the places to uh, create meetings, tasks, project plans, etc. And then, if they invite customer, customer uh, can also um, interact with maybe notes, tasks, even project plans, and it wasn't the best. Uh, it, it, it didn't work well for them. So my proposition was, no, well, why why not use Teams? Yeah, so we have secure communication, great meetings feature, uh, files, yeah, store, storage for files with collaboration features. You can use calls, but that's, uh, that wasn't the case here. And a lot of application and processes capabilities. Uh, yeah, that was my answer. Uh, I thought it would be great, but I get one 
a few words from, from my customer. Uh, we don't want one more tool. We try Teams. It's a good uh, platform, good tool, yeah, great chats, great meetings, etc. But it's another tool. We need to switch between our product plans, between documents, uh, uh, to to Teams, to 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 chat and uh, go back to our uh, outlooks, etc. It's it's not a good uh, good for us. Uh, so they used it as a one more tool, one additional tool not the core of the project process or project team, project workspace. And uh, for me, this sentence is uh, shows or describe the teams as a, uh, the hub for teamwork. Because if we treat teams like a one additional tool, it's, it's OK. It could work for communication, for storage, for some uh, collaboration, maybe with external users. Uh, but this the hub. Hub is the, this is the very important word here because if we use Teams as the hub, as this uh, main workplace for our project or for teamwork, because it's not only for projects, yeah, but uh, as this one place when we put all of our work, uh, our streams, tasks, projects, uh, files, etc., you can use it in proper way and minimal, minimize. Uh, overhead from other tools and yeah that was my customer was really mm, curious why what, what what about the hub that hub and they use it only for collaboration tools for uh, chats meetings that's all yeah uh, so yeah th then we started to create a new project new project team based on building blocks that we can find inside teams we have teams as a group for people to work together. We have channels, tabs, uh, applications, uh, automation capabilities and features. We have uh, adaptive cards, cards, message extension, etc. So a lot of lot of blocks, a lot of possibilities and a very flexible tool. Uh, but in this session, I will focus only on basics on teams, channels, tabs, applications and auto some automation at the end. OK, so I want now the important part switch to my uh, demo tenant. OK, so first we prepared a structure uh, in Teams, inside Teams. So I quickly create that from scratch, private team, say project, maybe not project, Teams first. OK, it's done. Hmm. Cool. I skip this one. I don't want anyone else. And we have, new, we have a new team, comes first. And then we build a channel structure inside this, inside that, that team. Because we always start with general channel. That's OK. Oh, and I switch back. That's not good. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, so uh, for that customer, for our client, uh, we create four channels because those four channels, uh, they use it in every single project because they have a lot of projects about those four streams for communication inside, inside each project are always there. Um, first, internal. Uh, but it was a private channel because they wanted to minimize uh, access to those to files to communication inside that channel from uh, external users and from entire team. Uh, they wanted to put their uh, some internal project files, maybe fina financial uh, files, etc. So it would it, it it must be a private channel, and it's not only internal name. I think this one, because we found it that it's very useful to put some icons, maybe not each icon, but you can find here using uh, Windows plus dot, but using uh, colors, patterns. Uh, it's 
easier easier to to to, to find that uh, to to find a specific channel using colors. So we, we use that uh, circle with some color inside. Okay, skip. I don't want it. And I have some not this one. Mm -hmm. Ah, I missed that internal should be red. Okay, that's the. Okay, um, quickly. Uh, okay, that's better. Okay, one channel for internal communication only. So it's private channel. We must invite other users to to that channel to to allow them work on that information. Okay, so we have dailies and tests. Uh, I add those quickly. Yellow as dailies. Yes, this is standard channel. Okay, one more. There was screen for tests. And as I remember, file for dev talk. Okay. This will be dev talk. And it should be also a private channel. Let's skip. Yeah, so we have a basic structure uh, with four channels internal as a private, dev talk as a private channels. And daily and tests as uh, public channels, so we can uh, use them. And every okay, I said that my cat is slipping, but no, she's here. Uh, so we have four channels, and those four channels will be replicated to all project teams in the if any project uh, will be provisioned. So we have it's much easier to find if I joined a new team, a new project team. It's much easier to find specific channel. If I remember only the color, I don't need to uh, go through and read uh, tra all channels because, of course, we can add more more channels if if our product requires more. So we have four basic channels, and there's one more thing that we uh, find that it's very useful. Uh, edit team, not edit team. Sorry. Yeah. Go. Manage team. Uh, and we change the uh, icon for the uh, for project team, and we found found out that it's very e it's easier to, to work if we uh, use similar or, or the same icon for each project team, uh, because if we use like here, you, know, you can. Uh, look at those icons they're very nice it's some kind of drone people tube etc uh, but if i am a member of five ten or maybe 20 projects teams uh, it's not easy to find the correct one okay i can use uh, uh, no pin in pin the specific chart the channel but i still get a lot of uh, teams in my list so it's it's much easier to uh, assign one uh, color icon with solid color inside to keep it simple and to find it uh, find the easier projects because we can we can have a lot of different teams. I have some uh, communication, some this is for teams academy, and some project teams, and all of them are green. A solid green icon with a uh, letter P inside, so it's much easier to find if I know that I, I'm looking for a project with solid green color. And inside I have same structure for uh, channels. So if I go to my project PS1, the same color structure, same pattern, much easier to find if we work with multiple teams, multiple projects. If I join a new project, uh, I will know that I find inter internal communication inside red channel. And why uh, why we used the private channels? There's of course we want to limit uh, 
access to that channels because in internal we can uh, keep financial data in DevTalk we can keep uh, developer uh, communication or internal communication that we don't want to share with entire team but there's one more more reason uh, our customer all very often invited a lot of external uh, users customers some external uh, workers etc and it's much easier if we create uh, private channels because we can easily uh, act, uh, invite external users. I can add member and type. Uh, guess external user using only his email email address and okay done. And using private channels, uh, guests they don't have access to private channels. I must go there and assign them uh, one by one so it's not easy to uh, you know, grant access uh, accidentally. One more thing before we go further, uh, it's a good idea to go to our project uh, team, to manage team and to settings and go through permissions uh, for members because we can uh, minimize some, uh, some behaviors that we don't want from our uh, members, let's say um, upload custom apps maybe, and this is uh, very, very, very important one. Uh, we can disable uh, private channels. For, for, we, we can deny creating of private channels for, uh, because if not, it's easy to if it's big, big, big team, it's easy to uh, know, cross the cross the limit because we we can have only 30 private channels in one team. And using private channels, we 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 lose we can lose control over our our data inside. So this is very simple structure, uh, but it works for them. Uh, we provide a very simple structure, very uh, that, that we can repeat. Uh, for each new new team, and it it looks easy, and I, I love that the pattern, and it works uh, very well, not only for that customer. Okay, so let's go to my. Oh, the second question, and it was very important for them because as a developer company, they worked they work with. Uh, Jira and DevOps, uh, Azure DevOps for code repository and for task management. So, uh, and they, <laughs> they use uh, both tools uh, at once. And in Teams, we have a lot of data sources, a lot of uh, applications from Microsoft and from third party companies that we can use inside Teams. So we don't need to switch between our project team and Azure DevOps or maybe Jira or any other other application that we can uh, embed inside our team. Of course, this list uh, is limited. There are about there are more than 300 uh, apps ready to use out of the box. But if we need something extra, we can go to the that specific vendor and find out if he offers offers uh, apps for teams or maybe we should prepare our own connector to, to that service. Uh, but out of the box, we, ha we have a lot of um, ready to use. I go to uh, general ready to use uh, connectors or apps. Uh, so for that customer, it's also very important to use Azure DevOps and what and Jira, Jira Cloud. Uh, so I will show you how to how quickly we can uh, set up Azure DevOps. Okay, I must select my organization, so I must be mm -hmm. I must have access to that uh, Azure DevOps. So it's very easy. We don't have to code anything here. We can uh, prepare some PS1, select some team. And let's say overview, that's it. I maybe rename that one. Oh. 
Okay, and how it works. Uh, we get here. It's very. Oh, sorry. Well, a lot of information here, but full, uh, fully working uh, Azure DevOps uh, dashboard inside Teams, and it's not only you no know, uh, graphics or information displayed on it on the on, on the tab, but uh, it's fully interactive. If I click that uh, task, it will show me uh, inside Teams that specific task and what more or important I can work on, on that task. I can add co some comments. Save or mod do whatever I, whatever I need inside my teams. So I can work directly from my teams. I, I don't need to switch between uh, teams and Azure DevOps uh, in web browser or maybe go to Visual Studio and check something there. I can do do this uh, directly from Teams, so that's that's good. Uh, and what about Jira? They had Jira and they still use Jira and. The same pattern, I must provide some connection. For that select uh, that one. It will load in a second and we have a list of my tasks in Jira for specific projects. So very easy to configure and still I don't need to switch between. Uh, teams and. Jira service in other browser. I can do this uh, and it's. Like uh, for Azure DevOps, it's fully interactive. I can create new issue. Directly from the tab. Mm -hmm. uh, it was project PS1. It says bug. It would be bug. Some bug. Bug. Yeah. If I refresh that one. Come on, come on. And yeah. We have some back here. If I click, I can open and work on that on that task. So uh, we minimize uh, the, the, the need to switch between applications or we can put a lot of inside our teams, our team and our specific channels, specific channel. Uh, so. If you use some cloud services, you can go to the top click plus and search through the entire list of applications. We have a lot of. Uh, no, so what we have. Mm, have a lot of uh, third party uh, application connectors. We have of course Jira, we have Azure, we have uh, definitely the Trello here. So go here, Asana of course, go here, uh, search for your ap application that you use. If it's here, you can use it, check how it works. And then you will be able to minimize uh, needs to switching between applications, maybe uh, between even different different applications, not only browser, but different applications on on desktop. Uh, but if your service isn't there, go to the page, the the, the vendor page, search or maybe contact with the vendor and uh, ask him for that kind of application. So th that's about data sources okay go quickly uh that was one yeah there's one app or maybe two that we extremely need but it's our custom app and in fact it, it wasn't even an app it was a weird process that based on email messages uh, and they sent each product manager sent huge table in email once a week with statuses of each project and risks and current situation and uh, limitation plans, etc. But it was huge uh, table with plain text inside email from five project management project managers uh, once a week. Um, so it, in fact, it wasn't enough, but with old school process, let's say. So what about that? Uh, can we do this? Of course we can. We can use Power Automate 
to build, sorry, power ups, why right, power automate, power ups to build uh, from simple to very complex applications that we can use inside our teams, inside our, uh, our project team. Uh, it's very important uh, because we can not only produce an application and send a link to that uh, application, but we can embed it inside our channel so we don't need to switch. The same as for Azure and for Jira. And I will show you how it looks. Mm -hmm. It's a very simple application. It There's a Power Apps app for Teams. Uh, this is my risk assessment. Yes, save. There's no risk, so I must. Uh, no risk, okay. So I will sign some missing PM. So it's very simple. Mm -hmm. Maybe this one. Uh, it took about two hours to. Uh, okay, some dates doesn't really matter. Uh, project I must find the project remediation. Yeah, it not works. Ah, uh, yeah, it works. And no, okay, I missed the. Uh, uh, I didn't create project in my list, so I must go there and uh, my demo is not working here probably. Yeah, in this one I must, uh, I should add my Converse project to my project list before uh, adding the app. But doing that app, it took about uh, three, maybe four hours with tests. It's very simple but address very important and very serious problem for that customer. Uh, they use that process with emails and text uh, inside tables for a few years, four or five, I don't know exactly, uh, but using that simple app, they don't need to use emails anymore. They simply go here, uh, go to each product uh, manager can go to the project specific project, click uh, assessment, risk assessment tab or whatever you call it, and register any, any risk. And each member of, the, of, the, of that project can easily go there and check uh, current risk, maybe add some uh, remediations or some actions, modify it. Uh, so using Power Apps, we can quickly address some uh, sometimes very complex application and processes inside our company, but we can also embed it inside our teams, our team. And what's more uh, important, uh, with the latest update, Power Apps can get context from team, uh, so we can quickly filter data inside that, that uh, application based on our project, our, our team name or maybe channel name. So uh, we can create one app, and use that app with context uh, in hundreds or even thousand teams. So, and it will always uh, display correct data. So, it's for me, it's fair, and for that customer, well, it was very, very important to not to, uh, you know, configure that app each time for in each uh, new team. We can we created only one? Then, when context appears, uh, modify it a little, and it works as in one app, and automatically display proper data. Okay. Where is my here? Um, switch, yes. And uh, yeah, the next question, the, the, the deeper, <laughs> uh, the more questions and more requirements. Uh, yes, they, of course, managers require reports. So what about that? Uh, of course, we can use Excel file. In many cases, it uh, will work. Uh, but we can also use Excel file as a report or maybe 
yeah, as a reports tool and embed it inside our team. But I prefer and I suggest to use Power BI uh, because it's, it's much easier to visualize, to, 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 to show data to product managers, to customers, to, 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 to entire team. Uh, because it's uh, look nice, looks nice. Uh, uh, dashboards and all data are interactive. We can uh, quickly filter, quickly navigate from data or do some drill downs in, in to deeper uh, layers of data. Uh, there's dedicated um, application for teams. So as previous, we can embed that. I will switch to my. Um, Uh, so we can quickly. So I go back to my com comms first. Uh, there's a Power BI. As I said, we can quickly add it to our. And then I must find that project. Oh. Okay, that's not good. I lost it somewhere. Uh, what a shame. No, oh, okay, it would work. So I can use uh, any report, Power BI report uh, that I upload to my Power BI workspace, and I can I, I must uh, have access to that report, of course. But I can upload uh, embed as a tab. So it's as a tab. I can re rename that tab, let's say, to report save. So I must provide access to all of my team members of private channel members, and then each user uh, will be able to go to that re report, navigate, click, let's say, forecast, mo modify mm, eight weeks works. Yeah, uh, that's not good. Six. Okay. Uh, navigate, select, filter data, whatever they need, and so it's they they can use use it quickly. Go to and get data required for the work. And again, they don't need to switch between uh, applications. Uh, without that, I should go to my new tab, go to Power BI uh, workspace, or even worse, go to Excel file, find that Excel, open, connect to data, wait for a refresh, etc. So it's we simply waste waste time here, but using Power BI uh, application, we can easily serve our uh, serve data to our, our our members, our team members, our product members, or even even our external uh, stakeholders, our customer, whatever we, we invite to our team. Only it only relies on uh, permissions, of course, and licenses because we must provide license for that. Uh, but if user ha has a license for Power BI, he will be able to use that license inside Teams. Okay, that's for Power uh, Power BI. And what next? Of course, our customer had more requirements, and yeah, that's. Seems very obvious. Uh, they, yeah, but they wanted uh, some automation because each month they start about five, six, maybe seven new projects. So up to seven new team uh, should be created. Uh, should be created each month. So manually, it's not a good idea to create, to recreate each process. Uh, uh, to create channels, create uh, add permissions, etc. It's not. Uh, it's also a waste of time if we uh, let it to to be manual process. And of course, we can you know users it can make some mistakes, uh, name it differently, connect it to different uh, data, miss some uh, users, invite other users, and and. It, could lead easily to uh, to a disaster. Uh, so about automation, it's not so simple. 
Uh, but we have Power Automate and we can create flow uh, that will automatically create and provision new team. So if we create some new project entry, maybe in our SharePoint list or other system, we can uh, trigger that, uh, that flow and it will create a new team based on our template. Uh, what's very important, we need, uh, we, we must use Graph API to, to do that because we can not only create team, but also create uh, private channels, maybe add some power apps inside that channel, etc. So it's very, very powerful API and you can easily manipulate or modify our, our team based on our needs requirements. So we can switch uh, from template to template based on project type, based on customer, etc. Okay, so I will show you. Here we have our project, so we can treat our Comsverse project uh, team as our template. Uh, we have some tabs, we have connection to Azure DevOps, to Jira Cloud, to some Power BI. We have beautiful color colors, uh, channels with colors, so that, that's good. Uh, but if I go here, join and create new, I have option create from and from team and if I see uh, here. Uh, okay let's say project one I can select um, I want to, to copy tabs tab settings apps and create and members come on uh, okay, probably I use that name. No, it's here. Uh, as, as you can see, there's the private channels uh, are missing. Uh, and inside, we have some project report, but we missed uh, uh, other application, other tabs. Uh, but if we use, uh, I will show you, I prepared a dedicated project a SharePoint list for creating projects. So I create a new project, let's say project comes first. Description here, yes, it's private project. I add some owner and maybe me as a member. And that's it. And I create a, maybe not simple, but uh, I create a flow and this flow start uh, is triggered based on that uh, SharePoint list. And using uh, Graph API, it creates a project, a new team project. And clone permissions create all private channels, create uh, and grant some uh, permissions, etc. So it create uh, a clone of my Commsverse team, so uh, I can easily go or some some people from sales or marketing or whatever we uh, we need go here and so we can connect that process, connect that flow to our existing project creation or project uh, workflow. Uh, we can create a simple entry here. Flow is starting, and if I go and check, it will uh, take some time, but I hope it. Uh, where is it? Oh yeah, it's here. Yes, it still is should some missing. Yes, project overview Jira. Yes, yeah, so it's and we have full two private channels. So it, it's working. That 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 simple that power automate flow. Uh, so each time a new user, a new project will be uh, switched to specific state. Let's say active or. Uh, ready to, de to to development. Uh, this flow can be triggered and will au automatically create our new team with colors, with channels, with basic configuration uh, for us. And then users will be automatically invited for that team and they can start working inside that team without any other tools or services. Uh, they should found uh, 
they should find uh, as much tools and as much uh, services as possible inside teams, uh, inside team and channels. Uh, but if we need something or we must switch to other, other application, we can simply add uh, maybe one node with links for that application or the even, oh, where's the one? Oh, I can't find it today. Hmm. Oh, the website to embed some internet application uh, or share a link to that application. So using that very simple structure and mostly, in fact, out of the box uh, applications and capabilities of teams, we can easily build uh, build that team that we can use as our, our project management workspace. And well, it's definitely worked uh, for that customer because he was very happy because now he's able to minimize applications, switching between applications, switching between services and all stuff, all files, all access permissions, etc., are, are in one place, in one specific uh, project team. And with some automation, uh, it's easy to create new projects, it will automatically create new teams, grant permissions, etc. Uh, so as a quick recap, a quick, uh, a few key takeaways from, from that session, please uh, use or think about teams like the hub of the teamwork, not as an additional tool to communication, to uh, to meetings or maybe to, fa to st storing files, to chat with external users, no. I think about this as, a, as the hub of the teamwork, because then you can, using that concept, you can build your digital, your virtual workspace, uh, for project, maybe for other departments, for, the, for whatever work for, uh, work workflow you, you you find useful. Okay, guys. So that's all for from from my side today for this session. Thank you very much. If you have any question, do you have any question? Please type them on chat. Uh, we haven't got any questions at the moment in the Q&A, Marcin. Um, okay. there, I'll just post that there is a breakout after this session. Mm -hmm. um, so if you, if you do have any questions for Marcin and you want to talk directly with them in a, in a Teams meeting, then um, I'll just put the breakout link in the um, Q&A now for everybody. Um, yeah, and I'm joining that there. breakout yeah. session. Uh, okay, yeah, so I've just posted the URL. It's uh, goteams.fans forward slash uh, brk239 if you want to join the Teams meeting and ask any questions directly with uh, Marcin there. Uh, otherwise, uh, thank you very much, Marcin. Um, thank you very uh, much. And I'll, uh, I'll end the session there. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.